Well, we're here today with Evelyn Alou, and Evelyn is currently has a solo exhibition at the California Fine Arts Exhibition. And uh, we're going to not only talk a little bit about the individual pieces that she's done, but a little bit about herself, her career, what she's done. She is an international award-winning artist, has shown locally, nationally, and internationally. Evelyn, tell me a little bit, how did you get started with uh, art in the first place? Great, thank you, number one, for having me here. And let me say that as far as art, it began many, many years ago, and I, can I honestly say my first art lessons were from my father to my sisters and myself when I was three years old. And from that point on, art was always a major part of my life, and um, it grew gradually through high school, and then got married at an early age and decided, okay, I really hadn't studied art, but I needed to, so at the age of 17, I took myself started teaching myself oil painting. And I, I can't tell you how many mistakes I thought I made because I didn't think I was right. And it, it took me a long time to realize I could do whatever I wanted. To make a long story short, I ended up, by the time I had my second son, deciding I needed to study this thing called art. So I went back to school and it took me 12 years to get my degree because I was raising my boys at the time. And that's the story of how I, this all began. I was a closet artist for a long time, shoving them under the bed. So glad you came out of the closet. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. <laughs> um, I decided, you know, what am I doing this for? And then I got encouragement from people. Okay, you got, you know, your work's pretty good. You need to take it, do something with it. And that's how it all started. And that's what, um, got me into abstract art as well because I, for a long time I did realism, 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 and then I gradually worked into abstraction, which is where my heart is. You know, one of the things also that uh, I, I love about you and your approach is that you don't keep art to yourself. You also have a passion for teaching others, uh, the, you know, to discover their passions. I know that uh, uh, I've had the opportunity to work with you at OCA, the Orange County Center for Contemporary Art, where we've had children come in, and it's been so much fun. Yes, Tell me, great. beyond yeah. that though, professionally you, yeah. you uh, do this, right? Aren't you an educator? I am. I, I teach all grades from what they call TK, which is before kindergarten, up to 8th grade. I have taught as high as 12th grade and adults. Um, some of the more interesting classes that I ta or taught where I did teach a blind girl to, to paint with yarn. Oh, well, that's she, fabulous. Yeah, she became blind when she was five years old, but she remembered color, so we had different weights of yarn for her, and she actually created awesome stuff. The other one, believe it or not, was deaf. And due to her deafness, her paintings were awesome. So I've taught a lot, and I love teaching. <laughs> You're still involved uh, with OCA also, aren't you? The educational chair with uh, the Orange I County am, Center for I Contemporary Art? We, we put on classes all the time, um, working with children a lot, as well as working with adults. So we offer different classes at OCA. Tell me something, I've heard a lot about the Art Walk that happens in Santa Ana, and I know that there's a lot of things that happen around town, specifically in what they call the Artist's Village. Can you oh, tell me a little bit about that? Artist's Village is an awesome place to spend an evening. The Saturday nights, first Saturday of each month, they hold um, all the galleries open that are local here, and um, you can find wonderful restaurants to eat, and visit galleries, purchase art, it's, it's an amazing place. That's wonderful. Oh, that's great. As a matter of fact, we're in the Artist Village right now in a, a very historic building called the Santora Building. It was uh, built in 1928 and is on the National Historic Registry. It's really something. So those of you who have not experienced that is every first Saturday. Come down and all the galleries are open. Paradigm Fine Arts here in the Santora Building as well as the California uh, Fine Arts Exhibition where you can see Evelyn's solo uh, uh, exhibition. Tell me, I'm glad we're starting with this painting because it's always been a favorite of mine. It's, it's just evokes so many thoughts and so many things. Can you tell me a little bit about this painting? Alright, this, this painting actually derived from 
forces of nature. I'm very much interested in the forces of nature and what goes on. And this really talks about living on the edge of the cliffs on the Pacific coast, which many do. This in particular was inspired from the cliff people, the homes on the cliffs at Dana Point. They will erode away, and we know that. It's just a matter of time. So I tried to put beauty with ugliness and create what I felt it would be like as, it, as erosion took place um, in Dana Point. It's fantastic. Tell me, is this acrylic or oils? What sort of paint? This is acrylic, some latex, a lot. Of, and you'll notice that I, some of the techniques I use are similar to watercolor techniques, especially the underlined or very first layers I put on. I did do watercolors for quite a while, and I used that technique first. My paintings take a lot of time as far as drying, because every layer that I do has to be dried before I apply the next layer. So yes, this is a lot of acrylic and um, latex, too. That's wonderful. Well, we're going to walk around the room and look at a bit more of your All work, right. and then we're going to uh, talk about a few other pieces. So okay. let's take Thank a look at some speak. of that. Uh, we'll take a look at some of that work right now. Well, here we are at one of my, another one of my favorite pieces, partially because it demands so much attention because it's so large. How large is this piece, Evelyn? This piece is five foot by seven foot. Well, wow, it's incredible. I think the other thing that really draws me to this is that the color palette that you used is very striking, quite beautiful. The use of the greens, which I know you use a lot of blues and such, but the, the greens in this one really, really say it for me. This really speaks to me. Craig, again, I'm, I'm dealing with forces of nature, and um, this basically, a lot of my work had, deals with the universe itself, so um, I'm thinking of sunshine and, and happiness, and, and so that's basically where this came from. Actually, it's very evident. That comes through in the piece. Does it? Yeah. That's, that's great to hear. Yeah. I'm, I'm always trying to paint, too, with the idea, I wonder what you're going to think of it. I wonder what other people are going to think of this piece. What are they going to feel? What are they going to see? And I'm always interested to pull that out of people, even though it may be completely what, different from what I'm thinking, it's still interesting to hear. I think that's one of the most interesting parts of art, is that we, you know, uh, we as artists may have one intent, but what somebody sees in it can speak to them in a personal way that's completely unique and that's different. True. You know, one of the things that is very different about your work is that it's not the typical barf and splat sort of thing that you see with Jackson Pollock, you know, where it's just like throw a bunch of paint on the wall and a lot of it's left up to random, uh, random results. With your work, there's definitely thought behind the piece and I, I see compositional elements as well as uh, a certain type of geometry. Uh, do, you, do you think that your, your work, would you call it a specific sort of work? I would call my work Yes, cruciform. It comes, stems from that type of abstraction. There's different types of abstraction, and um, I found later, after doing many, many abstract pieces, that it is cruciform um, in a lot of my pieces. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I, I do notice that there is a, a form that seems to be present in a lot of the pieces. So tell me about your approach on how you actually work with the, the pieces. This is a big one. Do you this have it standing up against the wall, or how do you work with it? I, I don't work on an easel ever with pieces like this. They're completely done on the ground, flat on the ground, and I have to actually work myself into the center as I'm, as I'm working. I, I, the same thing, I work in layers, but pushing, pulling, paint brushes, no. I never use paint brushes um, for type for this type of painting. I use everything from giant um, pieces of wood. Sometimes, sometimes I'll use palette knives. I've got large palette knives. I've got small ones, um, and it's a matter of a lot of layering and one piece at a time. I also, you'll notice pieces like when you see lines like this in my work. They're done with giant palette knives that I've got dipped in paint right on the ground where I'm working. 
this area, which I really got excited about, is this was a giant line, as you can see it here, all the way across the whole painting. And when I put it on, I looked at it and I said, I, I, it's not right, it can't be there like that. So I wanted to tone it down. So get out the old garden hose, squirt it. That's after, but that's after you let it dry. You've got to let it dry to a certain point so that you know just part of it's going to wash. Otherwise, it would just wash it all wash off. Wash the whole thing off if I yeah. get it right away. So a lot of my stuff that I do, you have to really um, give it time. And time is so important in my paintings. Time to know when to let something run, when to let something... It's, it's not just helter-skelter like a lot of people think it might be. It's That's really awesome. Fun. Well, let's take a look at another piece. Okay. Uh, and uh, I, I just find it's very fascinating, your approach. It's uh, very different, very unique. And, I, you know, this, this work resonates with a lot of people. And I think that that's because you do leave the, the door open for personal interpretation. So, and, I, and I do have to really say that most all of my work stems from an emotion. There's some sort of an emotion in all my paintings, whether it's good emotion, bad emotion. Um, it's really part of my work. Wonderful. Cool. Okay. Evelyn, has anyone ever told you you have a lovely smile? Oh, thank you, Craig. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> well, this is an interesting piece in that it is a uh, triptych, which uh, I, I don't see many of those uh, of your work, but this one, uh, what is the name of this piece? This piece is called Finding You. Mm, interesting. And what does that mean to you? Actually, Finding You Basically, which sounds crazy, is me finding me. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Absolutely. It um, does. So, when I did this piece, as you can see, there's a lot of blues and, and purples and uh, a little black in there, but blues being my very favorite color, as you'll find them in a lot of my paintings, this one developed slowly and it, and it kind of gave me some problems. And that's okay. It's okay to have problems with your artwork. It's okay. And sometimes when you have those problems and you push yourself, you end up doing something you didn't think you'd be able to do. That's Absolutely. Why I call it finding you. That's awesome. I yeah. think that also, like, being a former musician, uh, we used to call those divine mistakes because yeah. if you you know you like screw that. something like up and it's like wow it turns out being the coolest part yeah. of the entire piece. Or have you ever taken in my case a painting, stuck it under the bed because it's the ugliest thing you ever saw in your life, pull it out two years later and go, what on earth? Why did I dislike that painting? It's awesome. Absolutely. It's because you sometimes work ahead of what you're able to understand, and I think that was happening with this one. So, again, finding you is why it's called the way it is. It is a triptych, and as you notice, I did the black edge in here because I've always seemed to like to put black edges on my work if they're not framed, but yet I left them open here. Well, that's good. So that keeps a continuity between the pieces, but then, of course, it sort of frames and the outside of it. And get it to flow together, get it to work together. Didn't you tell me this is one of your more recent pieces? This is one of my most recent. I love yes. the direction. I think I only have two others that I did this past month since this one. That's because you took it. <laughs> I love the direction that you're going in. Tell Thank me, that, that very first one we looked at, The Edge, when was that piece done? On The Edge is probably about three years ago. Oh, wonderful. Very cool. Well, let's go look at some other ones. I know there's a, one over here that uh, has a really fascinating story, so okay. we're going to get to that in a moment. All right. Now, Evelyn, this piece is different than a lot of the uh, other of your works. First of all, I noticed that there's uh, a bit of a different look with the canvas, and also uh, it's got some hard lines in it in, compared to the more organic form of a, a lot of your pieces. What is the name of this piece, and what are your thoughts behind Craig, it? Craig, I find it interesting that you picked up on those things, but this piece is called Decisions, and it had to do with a lot of decision-making. The first being that I'm painting on beige canvas, 
which is linen, actually. It's a linen canvas, and it's got a totally different feel from what I've worked on in the past. Um, I loved what it did, and I loved how the different paint went on. So I did a lot of experimentation with wet on wet, thick, heavy paint. I did taping, as you can see, and did went from loose to tight and trying to figure out what decisions do I like for this particular piece. I like that. And the, some of the canvas is actually raw, is it? Uh... It's absolutely raw. That's the actual linen color. And um, you can purchase your canvases like that. And it, it, really quite beautiful to work on. You know, here's an interesting thought. Do you ever have any problems with the canvases shrinking or doing any weird things when they get wet? Not really. If, if anything, I like them when they get wet. I will take my pieces when I'm working on them because I do work wet on wet and I will actually dip them in my swimming pool. Wow, really? I do, or I pose them off. Yeah. Because I want the whole thing, and I like what it does when it's wet. That's and awesome. When it dries. Very cool. There's a piece right behind you that's pretty yes. interesting. Maybe we can talk about that a little bit. Okay, this piece is called Energy and Emotion, and I did this quite a few years ago. I think it was maybe five or six years ago, when my mother was ill with emphysema. I myself became very emotional, and I also became uh, I had a lot of energy taking care of her, doing all the things that, that are involved when a, when a parent gets ill. Um, so I had a lot of energy and of course a lot of emotion. So after she passed away, the emotional side came out more on this campus. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a energy and emotion that I felt at that particular time of my life. That's fantastic. And is it the choices, the colors were just kind of how you were feeling that, at that point? Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, this has really been a treat to be able to be with you and hear a bit more about your art. You know, I've known you for a number of years now, and I've always been taken by your works. But it's really cool to hear some of the background story on uh, a lot of the work. Well, so, thank you so much. I really appreciate having this opportunity to tell you about my work, actually. Well, it's fantastic. And, you know, I want to invite everyone down. Uh, unfortunately, I will be out of town for the next Art Walk, but Evelyn will be here. Absolutely. And uh, talk about perfect Christmas gifts for somebody. All of her work is for sale at some fantastic prices. i got to say, I think quite reasonable and a, and a bit of a bargain. And uh, come on down. The first Saturday of December, come on to the Art Walk, which there's a lot of things to do down here, and the gallery will be open. We are located at 207 North Broadway uh, in Santa Ana in the beautiful Santora building, and it is Suite P, which is the California Fine Arts Exhibition Gallery. Thank you so much, uh, Evelyn, for uh, coming down today. And, uh, Thank you, Craig, and I look forward to seeing all of you visit the gallery.